Good morning, everybody. Um, well, you've heard um, earlier on from Tim Hawkins from, uh, from MAG about our view on the, on the Commission, so I won't really touch too much on that. But let me first sort of uh, reflect a little bit about some of the changes we've been making in Stansted uh, to transform the passenger experience, but also how I see sort of Stansted playing a much greater role in meeting aviation growth in London and the South East over the next decade and beyond. So it's just over two years really now since MAG acquired Stansted. And in that time, we've seen the airport take on a new lease of life and thrive in a competitive environment within London. In terms of some of the highlights, we've seen new destinations coming on stream pretty much every month and passenger numbers growing and going from strength to strength, particularly in the key European business hubs, serving the burgeoning growth markets in London that we've heard about from Declan, but also Cambridge in the east of England. We're also making strong progress in our quarter of a billion pound investment programme in Stansted. The Terminal Transformation Programme is nearing completion this autumn, bringing a new departure lounge, full service uh, carrier facilities, business lounges and new technology to speed up the customer journey. And passenger growth has dem demonstrated a real vote of confidence in Stansted. We've seen passengers increase from 17.4 million in February 2013 when we arrived to 21.5 million passengers today. In fact, in the last 12 months, passenger numbers have increased by 17%. That's over 3 million passengers during the period, an equivalent to the growth at Heathrow and Gatwick airports combined. Stansted's now firmly placed as the fastest growing major airport in the UK, serving 170 destinations across 38 countries. And in my view, we can do a lot more to improve uh, the UK's connectivity with the rest of the world at this time of limited capacity. So on to the report. I agree that there's a case for more airport capacity in the South East and recognise the need for prompt and decisive action to deliver this by 2030, by which time all of London's major airports will be operating at full capacity. But experience from Manchester Airport, the only airport to build a full length runway since the Second World War in the UK, shows that it could take at least 15 years to deliver a new runway and significant challenges will need to be overcome. These timescales suggest that the next runway in the southeast is clearly a mid-term measure, and that's why it's vital that we have a robust short, medium and long-term aviation framework that puts passengers and competition at the heart of our thinking. Because if you're an airline executive based overseas and listening to the coverage of the report last week, you could be forgiven for thinking that London and the southeast is closed for business until a new runway is built. And this means that for the next 15 years, London and the South East could miss out to other European cities for the, of the competitive advantage of connectivity. But there is capacity now. Despite our growth, Stansted has available runway capacity today and room to grow in the future. We have permission to grow 35 to 35 million passengers a year, but with the relaxation of planning caps, the airport could easily handle 40 or even 45 million passengers off a single runway, all within agreed uh, environmental limits and the airport footprint. To put that into context, that's an additional 20 million passengers a year available immediately and compares favourably to the 30 to 35 million passengers a year that will be unlocked by a runway elsewhere. So in addition to considering the point on planning caps, if we really are serious about getting more from our airports, joined up thinking on rail and aviation policies should be a priority in the government's response to this report. In particular, creating the best possible rail links linking Stansted to the London and Cambridge markets, but clearly not at the expense of our commuters. So it sounds like a no-brainer, but here's the risk. Despite Sir Howard's support for Stansted rail improvements, which he described as urgent uh, in his re interim report two years ago, and backed up again last week, progress on this can certainly not be considered as urgent, and we are still waiting. Looking to the long term, we share the Commission's view that Stansted's existing runway will be full by 2030. The high-level view of London in economic terms will be very different in 2030, and in the network of competing airports across the UK, the demand profile for customers will also be different from what it is today. Now, I think Declan's pretty much covered off the growth in, in East London, so I won't, I won't labour that point, but I think um, that's clearly why in the longer term, Sir Howard has recognised strategic importance of other airports, airports like Stansted and Manchester, and we've shown at Stansted what can be achieved and changed in just two years of ownership. To conclude, airports like Stansted, with capacity today and room to growth in the future, will play a key part 
in providing improved connectivity for London and the UK. And the government's response to the Commission's final report must tackle these issues in parallel with those associated with delivering a new runway. This opportunity is huge. If we succeed in making the most of Stansted in advance of new capacity coming on stream, businesses and passengers avoid higher airfares and will experience increased connectivity and more choice, with the consequent benefits for UK's productivity and economic performance. Thank you.